Upgrading is a great way to improve the ride quality of your bike. But on an e-bike, some places are more important than others. Now you can upgrade for many reasons. Obviously, when you can afford it is the main one, but there are others too, such as to get an increased performance of your bike, to get the fit right, or indeed to get more reliability and durability. In this video, we're gonna look at what to upgrade and how important they are to the relative performance of your e-bike. Very often, the cockpit on your e-bike has a lot to be desired. Handlebars too short, stem too long, and the grips the wrong compound and wrong shape for you. Now, you can upgrade the cockpit area either one at a time or indeed at all in one go. It depends on your budget. Um, it actually depends on you as the rider, your shape, your bike size, and the riding conditions. So let's have a look at each component part of the cockpit then. Um, first up, the handlebar. Now, this is gonna depend on your height and your size. For example, I'm six foot and 90 kilos, and I go for a 780 to 800 millimeter bar, whereas the Don is about 510, and he goes for a 760 to 780 millimeter bar. Now, the handlebar is a really key in fine tuning your cockpit area. If your bike is too small, you'd be surprised how much that wide handlebar will open up the space in the cockpit area. But what you're looking at crucially is the height of the handlebar, the width, the material, I think an aluminium bar is a good bet, um, and obviously the diameter. I mean, I go for a 31.8. Moving on to the stem, again, the stem is really important to fine tune your cockpit area in terms of your weight on the front wheel and your weight on the back wheel. A longer stem will give you more weight in the front, whereas a shorter stem will push that weight further back. So we're looking between about 35 millimeters and 60 millimeters. And if you can go for a, a neutral rise on that, or a non-rise, I guess, on that stem. Uh, grips, grips are really important. Um, things to look out for are the lock-on. Try to get the lock-on on the inside of the grip. The width of the grip, so your hand actually fits on there, and also the compound. So if you ride in wet climates, go for a softer compound grip, and also if you don't ride with gloves. So there you go, three items. Like I said, either go for it all in one go or upgrade one at a time. Tires, you're gonna be going through a hell of a lot of these. Increased torque from the bike, more weight from the bike, and hopefully increased mileage. Now, there's three main things to familiarize yourself with, and that's the kind of different types of tire. You have dry weather tires, wet weather tires, and intermediate tires. Now, also you need to think about the compound of each tire. Um, the softer compound tires are gonna obviously have a higher wear rate, uh, but also that's gonna lead to a bit more drain on your battery. If you're going for one hour flat out loops, then that soft compound tire is gonna be great, especially in wet conditions. However, on the whole, you need to be looking at a harder compound tire, about 2.6 I think is great for an e-bike, gives you a good cushioning on those rocks and roots. Uh, also gives you a good range. But the key thing with tires is to familiarize yourself with the terrain and the type of riding you do, so it suits the ground conditions and your e-bike perfectly. It's highly likely that the pedals that came on your e-bike are very, very basic. However, it's a key contact point on your bike, so it's really worth upgrading in this area. They come in two different types, uh, flat pedals and clip pedals. Now, the flat pedals, they come in different shapes. You can get smaller ones or wider ones. Uh, they also come in different thicknesses, so obviously some are closer to the ground than the others and they come with a different amount of pins and indeed some, are, some pins are sharper than the other. Now, like I said, it depends on how you ride. You might, wanna, you might wanna move your foot around a little bit more, in which case you need less sharp pins and a smaller pedal. Whereas if you want that foot really anchored tight on there, go for the super sharp pins and a wide platform. And the same applies with clipped pedals, uh, different widths, different thicknesses, and indeed different amounts of pin on the surface. Actually, so with clip pedals, you get ones that are more orientated towards cross country, which are smaller, and the larger ones are more suited towards downhill. I think the key things with pedals overall is if you can try to learn how to master riding with both clips and flats, that's a really, really good skill to get hold of. 
Now your front and rear wheels on your e-bike are going through an incredible amount of stress due to the increased weight of that e-bike. It's all about the more mileage, more mass and more torque through that back wheel. But also remember there's going to be a lot of stress through that front wheel because those big collisions that that heavy bike is taking on board. Now, in general, I think it's about a performance upgrade here, depending on the type of riding you're doing, especially if you're doing more technical downhill style riding. So in that kind of environment, you should be looking to upgrade to a stronger, tougher wheel. Indeed, you can get actually e-bike specific wheels, which really will be a godsend in those conditions. If you are plagued by flat tires, then going tubeless is route one. In fact, it's the only route to choose. If you look at World Cup downhill riders who are going through some big impacts, big collisions, then they all, about 90% of them, choose tubeless tires as their technique. It is simply such a reliable method. Um, so what do you need? Well, you can get a set of tubeless tires, you can get a tubeless conversion kit for your existing tires, and then just get some tubeless sealant. Boom, or not boom. A spare e-bike battery is a lot of money, between five to 700 pounds, depending on the brand that you choose. Now you could argue it's, a lot, it's money well spent, it's better spending on this rather than on maybe some lightweight carbon parts that aren't gonna give you a massive performance advantage on your e-bike. Whereas a spare battery is just gonna be so good for overnighters, longer day rides, or to get to those places that are really, really out of reach. Spare battery, yeah, it's probably high up on the upgrade list of your e-bike. Adjustable seat posts, it's a key, key part of your e-bike kit. If you haven't got one, get one today. If not, get one in the next few days. It is so, so important. Why? Because it's gonna enable you to get the most of that all-round riding that you're gonna be doing on an e-bike, climbing, descending continually. Uh, they come in lengths of between about 100 millimeters and 150 millimeters drop. But what's most important is you need to make sure that you can get the seat low enough so you can get your legs over the bike on those descents. At the same time, it needs to be at the right height, the optimum height, to be able to get the best out of those climbs. E-bike brakes need to be strong and powerful due to the increased weight of the bike and the increased amount of climbing and descending that you'll be doing. Look for four piston designs, some organic compound pads, and also the brake rotors is a really important part of that brake system. There is simply no place for anything less than 200 millimeter rotors on an e-bike. More miles and more climbs means it's really important to get the saddle and the position right on your e-bike. It's worth bearing in mind that e-bike climbing is quite specific. You're quite likely to be sat down a lot more on an e-bike than a non-e-bike. So it's really critical to get also the angle right and also the hardware right. And there's tons to choose from. Carbon, plastic, titanium, some brands even have a custom saddle program. So yeah, when it comes to upgrading your saddle, there's a low to look at. Hope you like this video. If you want to go into more depth on such things as cockpit setup, have a look at this video over here. Uh, please give us a thumbs up if you like this video. And yeah, it'd be fantastic if you click that subscribe button.